Whenever we start a new project, we want to take our source code and put it under source control. But there are certain files that we might not want to include in source control, and that's where git ignore comes in. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Ponces. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at our old friend, dot git ignore. <laughs> Yeah, so let's just pretend we're creating a new project here, like we often yes, do. Yes, And I'm just going to do a .NET new console. It's going to spin up a new uh, .NET based console app, and I'm going to open that that up in Visual Studio Code here. And I'll zoom in a bit on that for you. So initially, that just creates a couple of pro files for me. There's the CS proj and the program.cs. Really, that's my source code. Like that's the code that. When I create a new repository for this, that's the code that I want to include in source control. Uh, but when I go and, so Visual Studio Code here already is asking me, do I want to create assets for building and debugging this? Yes, yes I do. So it creates some new files for me and now I can go and run this. And it compiles it, it builds a whole bunch of files that I don't want in source control, but it ran my application. That's all good. Uh, but if we go back here now and we look at all of the things that were created, there's this object folder with all of this stuff under it. There's a bin folder with a whole bunch of stuff. I don't want that under source control. I really just want these two files, plus probably what's in this VS code so that other people who are using this um, can share those tasks that we have in here for like starting up the .NET process and debugging and everything. Um, so if I go back to the console here and I do a git ignore, or git ignore, a git init, to initiate a git repository here. Now when I do a git status, it lists, uh, it includes these folders that I don't want. And if I look at that in the source control explorer inside of Visual Studio Code, I see that there's like 29 files all of a sudden. I don't want those in there. A lot of so, files. Yeah, we don't want all those in there. And the solution to that is, since we're using git here, is a file called .git ignore that contains a bunch of rules for file names and folders and things that we don't ever want to include inside of our source control. Uh, now we could go and Google, uh, we could create the file ourselves, the .git ignore, and we, or we could go and Google for like a standard .NET git ignore. But there's a really handy way to do this. Uh, if I do .NET new, which will list out all the new file templates for me, and I scroll around here, there's actually a git ignore version here, or a git ignore thing. So I can just say dot net new git ignore. That adds a git ignore here Ooh. to my project that has all of the things that we would expect in uh, like Visual Studio slash dot net kind of development. So all the files that we don't want to include. All the rules are in there for us. I don't have to Google for it. It's got everything I need. So now when I go over to my source control Explorer here, I can see that well, my dot get ignore file is in there. I do need to check that in. There's my two source code files and then my two JSON files for the Visual Studio Code configuration. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Dot net new get ignore. That's a good shortcut because I always end up Googling around for that or copying up from a previous project. So that's a great shortcut. Excellent tip. All right. Well, Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this quick episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and share because none of those are listed in your Git Ignore. You have to do them. <laughs> Bye. Bye.